In 2012, a new discovery shocked the world. In the biggest machinery ever built on the planet Earth, that is the Large Hadron Collider, where two protons are made to collide at a speed near to the speed of light, a new particle pops up. This particle was in the mass range of a hypothetical particle proposed by physicist Peter Higgs in 1964, and thus it was named after him as Higgs boson. The particle was dubbed as the God Particle and soon a new discussion among scientists, theologians and philosophers started. Unexpectedly, we got to know something that was unknown to humanity for thousands of years and it was this strange particle that provided us mass. What is this Higgs boson? Is it really a manifestation of God on Earth? Let's understand in this video. My name is Siddharth and you are watching The World of Science. Firstly, why was it called the God Particle? In 1993, American physicist Leon Max Lederman wrote a book on the Higgs boson and named it the God Damn Particle. Maybe he was very eager for it to be found soon. Higgs proposed his theory in 1964 and it was discovered in 2012. One can imagine the frustration. But publishers didn't let him call it a goddamn particle, so the final title chosen was the God Particle and hence it was named so. Higgs boson is a particle that is responsible for the mass of all leptons and various elementary particles that make us and the entire universe. Thus, one can say it is definitely the God Particle. After all, without Higgs, we would be massless and that sounds like a pretty strange world. How does the Higgs boson provide mass to the particles? To understand this, we have to learn some mathematics here. Mathematician Emmy Noether proposed a new theorem called Noether theorem which says that behind any conservation law there is a physical symmetry that allows the property to be conserved. For example, time symmetry led to conservation of energy which can be understood as the presence of equal energy at every point of time in the universe. Similarly, translational symmetry is responsible for conservation of linear momentum. A question arises as to what is the symmetry responsible for conservation of charges? Let us not get into tough mathematics and just understand the basics from now. In Lie algebra, there are various symmetries presented in groups, such as the U1 symmetry group known as the unitary group of degree 1, which can be visualized as symmetry of a circle that is the simplest symmetry in mathematics. This symmetry requires only one generator such as a photon in the case of electromagnetic forces. A generator here is a mathematical term for parameters which produce symmetry. As we know, quantum particles are waves, so the symmetry associated with conservation of charges is the phase symmetry shown by the U1 group in case of electromagnetic force with one generator that is photon. Similarly, for weak forces, SU2 and for strong force, SU3 symmetry groups are used. These are called the special unitary groups of degree n and are the group of n by n unitary matrices with determinant 1. Thus, every fundamental force can be shown as the result of some mathematical symmetry inherent in quantum field theory. But what will happen if this symmetry breaks down? Mathematically, symmetry breaking can be explained as any small change in the equation of a system that pushes the symmetric system to an unsymmetrical state. There are two types of symmetry breaking. Number one, explicit symmetry breaking in which equation of motion of the system gets unsymmetrical. And number two, spontaneous symmetry breaking in which equation of the motion remains symmetrical but vacuum solution of the system loses the symmetry. Vacuum solution is the solution of a quantum field in value of potential energy that approaches the minimum value. A valley in the hills can be called a vacuum solution of the hilly area. In superconducting materials, when temperature is lowered below critical temperature, then electrons and positive ions get attracted to each other and form temporary pairs called Cooper pairs. 
Since these pairs have a total charge of zero, or in the case of an electron-electron pair, total spin becomes one, they behave like bosons which can acquire positions at the same quantum level not obeying Pauli exclusion principle. They can easily move through the lattice and hence become superconducting. Physicist Yochiro Nambu noticed something here that is the case of a symmetry-breaking phenomenon. Due to the Cooper pair, energy of the system gets reduced. Every superconducting material has its own vacuum state, but due to the Cooper pair, there is a new vacuum state that is lower in energy. Thus, the symmetry of the system is broken due to the presence of a new field. Here it is, a Cooper field. What if there is a presence of such a field throughout the universe which exists at a false vacuum state that is vacuum with some minimum energy available? This field will present a new vacuum state other than the true vacuum of the universe. When the weak nuclear force was being studied in the 1960s in SU2 symmetry groups as discussed earlier, we got three generators that are three weak particles, W+, W-, and Z. But each particle had mass parameters of zero value. That should not be the case as the weak force is responsible for radioactive decay. A particle emits a weak particle to lose its charge, mass and becomes a new particle. Thus, three particles are associated with changing of positive, negative and neutral charges respectively. Decay causes the loss in mass, so particles that are emitted must not be massless. Hence, physicists noted down that there is some mathematical framework missing which is unable to give mass parameters to the weak particles. But if there is a false vacuum field available throughout the universe, weak particles can interact with this all-permeating field and this interaction will cause the weak field to gain some energy from the false vacuum field. This gaining of extra energy is equivalent to gaining mass on the particle. In 1964, Peter Higgs proposed that apart from imparting vacuum expectation value or VEV, that is minimum energy present at vacuum, to the interacting weak matter field, this hypothetical field can also produce a dynamic field whose quanta will be a zero spin boson, later named after him as Higgs boson, and this hypothetical field was known as Higgs field. So to summarize, there is an all-pervasive God field called the Higgs field whose quantum particle is the Higgs boson and when a matter field interacts with the Higgs field, it will impart its vacuum expectation value to the matter field that will act as the physical gaining of mass. Think of it as moving your hand through air versus moving through water. Through water, your hand will feel heavy, thus water is the Higgs field and that feeling of extra mass is the vacuum expectation value of water. So, what are your thoughts about this God particle? Let us know in the comments. If you found this video interesting, please leave a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Check out our new Hindi channel from the description below. Do follow us on Instagram for daily quality content that will make you fall in love with science. Comment down the topics that you want us to cover in our next videos. Make sure you subscribe to the world of science. Until next time, stay scientific.